Finally, Senate removes direct primaries clause and passes Electoral Act amendment as the House of Representatives rescinds decision on direct primaries. And Speaker of the House of Representatives Femi Bajabi Amila calls for a review of educational qualifications for presidential aspirants. This is Plus Politics. I am Mary Anako. The Nigeria Senate has removed the clause that makes direct primaries mandatory for the election of candidates into political parties from the Electoral Act Amendment Bill. The House also of Representatives has rescinded its decision on the compulsory direct primary clause in the Electoral Act Amendment Bill. The lawmakers reversed the move during its plenary session today and instead adopted the direct and indirect primaries. It also expunged the consensus option. Well, joining us to discuss this is the Director General of Heritage Centre, Dr. Kach Onunuju. Uh, thank you very much, Doctor, for joining us. Thank you for having me. Great. It's interesting. I mean, this is the front and centre of every conversation right now, the Electoral Act Bill. And many have asked that Mr. President be, um, his, his, he should be vetoed one way or the other. Um, but then there are also people on the other side of the divider saying, well, do not veto Mr. President. Do what you need to do and pass, um, send it back to the president uh, to deal with it. But looking at what's happened today on the floor of the National Assembly, both the upper chamber and the lower chamber, what are your thoughts? Because it looks uh, a bit, um, you know, discombobulated, for want of a better word. Uh, no, I would say this is the beginning of the processes that we get the two items of the National Assembly towards a joint meeting and concurrence. There were three items that were affected today in clause 84. And that is changing the direct primaries as being the option to now expand the options. The Senate said, allowing the president's uh, new pet project about consensus, whatever it is that makes the Senate agree on consensus that makes the House of Rep uh, kind of drag its feet on it. We will see when they go for consolidation of the two positions. So what we've had now is progress hmm. towards getting the president to append his assent to the Electoral Act amendment. So he has said to the Senate, I want consensus, I want uh, uh, direct primary, and I also want indirect primary. In other ways, let the options be to the parties to choose what they want to do. And that's what we've done today. So the House of Rep is simply saying something which later on on negotiation table, we may get to understand that may be an insistence from his own faction mm. of the APC uh, that they might want... Uh, uh, they, don't, they don't want consensus. Mm. So we will see how that gets to when the Senate sits in a joint session with the House of Rep towards harmonization. That's where we will see if the president will get what he wants in terms of consensus. But principal issues have been dealt with. And mm. that is the president saying he does not want that in the in direct primary being the only option. That has been said and given to him by the jubilee of clause 84. I'm curious, uh, and, and we're not trying to preempt what the National Assembly's joint uh, meeting would be, but looking at the expunging of the consensus idea, this has brought a lot of people, you know, has thrown up a lot of people in, within political parties. I was having a conversation yesterday and the person said, well, uh, the APC sometimes mostly leans to consensus candidates and sometimes, you know, when they pick and choose, they can also have uh, indirect or direct primaries. 
But let's look at, you know, the reasons why these things are chosen by political parties. For example, I had a politician here yesterday and he said, most people who choose indirect primaries do that because they have done some groundwork and they've talked to delegates and they're very certain that this base would get them the votes that they need to emerge finally as flag bearers. And then he said, for those who choose indirect primaries, half the time, maybe they're not the anointed one, in quotes, by the governor or the leader of the party at the point. So they want to make the people choose. And that way, they're hoping they would be thrown up as the flag bearer of the party. So this is a game of interest as we speak. But where is the democracy in all of this? If this, in both ways, people are looking at how they can get votes and not necessarily allowing the process of democracy to take its course. Democracy is in two of them. Democracy doesn't exist in consensus. Because consensus could just be a trick through which some strong people may want to impose a candidate on a caucus. And then when you complain, they say, we built a consensus. So that may not be democratic. That's where the problem is. And that I think, at the end of the day, the president may simply still sign it. Uh, even if he doesn't get his way. But, as I said earlier, these are the opening semantics as we progress towards this electoral act. INEC has already said that it will not set any timetable until the electoral act is assented to. That means we have a contribution from all spheres of our national life, from those on the streets, from those in the business community, from the political class who are actually playing the tricks. Hmm. Because I really do not see any reason why people should not be allowed the option of choosing what they want from the world go. Or go. It wasn't necessary to put in just direct primary. No, we should have been here. We should have been here before now. Parties should have had the right to choose what they want. Direct primaries is a very expensive process. You might also have a new party. They don't need to do all that. They simply decide with themselves and they go to the field and then do the display. Mm -hmm. So I don't think we should very quickly start to allow this fight between the governors who want to be careful about who makes the list of those who are going for elections and the aspirants who may think they're very, very popular and so we not want the governors to influence anything, but we want to go directly to the field and try their locks out. You see, this is just a process. The mm -hmm. democracy is still, as I can see, evolving. If President Buhari assents to the amendment of the Electoral Act, that will be a landmark position because what's inside it is bigger than the noise that we're talking about now. Mm. The direct capability of INEC, where possible, to transmit reports electronically is the main elephant inside this electoral act. So mm. all the other noise about direct and indirect, those things are irrelevant to the real conduct of the elections and the processes that would make the process to be seen, to be clean mm. to the public and whoever the observer is. So I think we're making good progress. It is good the way this issue has been attended to today at both the House of Reps and the Senate of the Federal Republic. So let us see how this gets in the next two, three, four days and see when that paper will be in front of the president for his assets. I have no doubt the ruling party have seen that the public and the international community plus our deployment partners are not willing to actually watch and accept that the government and its apparatchiks are not ready for the progress of our democratic process. And I believe a lot hinges on what happens to this bill. So I am still very, very optimistic. Like a lot of Nigerians were optimistic. We pray the president will do everything he promised he would do. Now that they've given him what he wants. He said he wants consensus. The Senate is moving there. But let's see what happens when the Senate and half of Red sit together to harmonize everything and then we'll know we'll have the bill. I like your optimism, but then all of this is hinging on if, and it's a probability. So um, going back to what INEC, um, INEC's boss, um, Mahmoud Yacoub, had said about the you know, rolling out of the plans for the elections come 2023 and the calendar, 
Um, what if, I mean, the, the biggest question is, what if this lingers? Because, you know, we're working with time here. INEC also needs to prepare on time so we do not have hiccups as we always do. What if this lingers and there's a drag? Like, what happened in 2015 when they said, oh, well, uh, it was too close to time uh, for, for, for it to be passed, uh, for it to even be activated for the elections? What if there's that drag? Because can INEC just put all of its hope on the fact that Mr. President may or may not uh, give his assent to this particular one that they're going to come up with? Well, I can conveniently tell you that a lot of people who work at INEC cannot travel back to their villages. And they know very well if they keep quiet and allow politicians to mess the process up, that all of us will be entrapped by those who seek to keep democracy and destroy it. So I think it's a very, very encouraging thing that all institutions involved in this process are actually expectant that president will sign. So it was very welcome when I next said they will suspend a fixation of the timetable until after we clear the electoral process law, which is the electoral act. I think that's really spoke a lot. And for that to come from INEC, that tells you that INEC wants to get it right. They know very well that politicians purposely make laws to undermine the process, to disallow the use of biometrics, the use of technology, to make it easier for INEC to do its work. So President Buhari has done his two terms. I think he should be grateful to the country and be quit out a better electoral process than he met. Okay. If that is what he wants to repeat to the country, we will say thank you to him. But if he does not want that to happen, he should understand that that will tell very badly on his legacy that he never moved the nebula from where he saw it until where he left. So I think he understands this is a landmark uh, uh, legislation and it does have very strong input on the electoral process going forward. I believe a lot of people have come on to bring pressure, to tell the president, allow the country to move on. Because a lot hinges on his assent to that law. If he signs it, we can conveniently say that our electoral process has now started moving. It has come into being in line with uh, prevalent technology because mm. you have biometrics. And for us to use biometrics, you need this law. For us to also use the electronic transfer of results, you need this law. So a lot is actually riding on the law. Never mind the issues about direct or indirect primary. No matter the process to put parties, bring out the candidate, the most important thing is the voting. And in the voting, you have amendment to the electoral act that will allow automatic transfer of electronic tra uh, results. And also, as they say, the biometric use which we've seen very successful in Anambra. I mm. believe the government will do the right thing by ascending to that bill. I think that INEC is on the right path. I also think that House of Rep and the Senate will finally come together and allow that bill to go to the president in the next seven days. Uh, talking about the National Assembly here doing the right thing, I'm always, I, I like to look at things from what if. Now, how much pressure should non-governmental organizations, pressure groups, um, all those who are interested, those of us who want, you know, this bill to scale through, um, how much pressure needs to be put daily on members of our National Assembly? Don't forget, they all have interests, whether it cuts across party lines or not. How do we make sure that this does not take long, just as I said earlier on? Um, should we go beyond what we did before when there was a row of sorts that, you know, um, issues of um, direct or indirect primaries were now, you know, the order of the day. How can we make sure that pressure is put upon not just Mr. President, but members of the National Assembly to make the right call on this issue, knowing that a lot, as you have said, is riding on it? I can tell you from the inside the knowledge I have, Senator Barry Bay, leader of the opposition, has made his work very well. He has gotten all members of even the ruling party to realize that this is in the good of the country on the long term. The president seemed to be well embarrassed enough to go on grudgingly sign this bill. The National Assembly know very well 
that a lot will be written on who they are and how they end this session if they sign this bill. So I believe, I want to continue to share the optimism of the country that Buhari will do the right thing and assent to this bill. I have no doubt this bill, in some way or form, will be assented to. Now, talking about going forward, when the bill finally, you know, does get passed and assented to by Mr. President, um, looking at the um, electronic part of the bill, will this electronic transmission of results pave way for the conversation of e-voting, diaspora voting? We also see that there are other contents of this particular new bill um, or things that have been tweaked, like um, the... Um, independent candidacy that might be an option for a lot of people we've seen uh, a young lady who has decided that she wants to run for presidency but then she does not have a platform to run uh, on will this also give room for more and more people who probably have good intentions and want to run for public office i cannot tell you what the bill will give what bill will not give until after the amendment is done what we know today, which I can surely tell you, is there's been a tinkering of Clause 84. So Clause 84 says, allow for various forms of primary. So instead of making it only the direct primary, now we have the indirect primary. And the president is also asking, and the Senate seem to be listening to him in regards to, he say he wants consensus. Consensus how? It could be in regard to their quest to bring outsiders to run on the platform of the APC. If that passes through, it may then be easy for them to have meetings. Leaders will agree, and they say they have a consensus presidential candidate. So it is probably due to the interest of uh, the principal of the House of Red Speaker uh, in the presidential election that you may be seeing the House of Rest Speaker forcing this grudging dragging of his feet and giving the president what he wants in regard to the consensus candidacy. But then I think lawmakers will be able to sit over it and see if it is allowed under law that somebody manages through consensus without going through the spelled out processes of the primary election process. So we are watching to see what we finally get in the bag when this thing in the National Assembly that has started today ends. Until that, I will tell you, let's cross our fingers and be very optimistic for what will come finally in the electoral bag when passed. Before I let you go, I don't think you got my question properly. I talked about other things that were not necessarily an issue when the president returned that bill to the National Assembly. I'm talking about the inclusion of independent candidacy. So you don't necessarily need to be a member of the APC or the PDP to emerge as a candidate to run for an office. I'm also talking about the issue of e-voting. I'm saying if we are able to deal with this issue of e-transmission, does this pave the way for the conversation for e-voting and diaspora voting? This is what I was asking. Well, the issues of e-voting and diaspora voting, I believe, are processes that will come when INEC has the capability to do a lot of those things. The fears of e-voting is, does INEC have the deployment capability for the machinery that is needed for it? If they do, do they have the logistics to man all the places where these things can be done? Yes, INEC have the money if you give them they will be able to purchase e-voting machines available today on Earth. And as far as we have a telecom presence in the places where automatic registration of the votes will be required at a, a last link server, uh, if that becomes necessary and it's available anywhere on Earth, Nigeria can deploy it. I like I said so. So it is bill when passed and assented the way it is now, will be able to allow INEC to decide some of those things you're saying. The issue of e-voting, INEC will decide when to do it, if it has the capability and the logistics. The issue about independent candidacy, if it is in the bill, yes, it will be. If it is not in the bill, then we'll have to do more work to impress it 
all legislators to include it there. That is, if it doesn't make the final bill that we expect to be ready in the next one week. So that's why I'm telling you, I don't know what or what is in or what might go out yet. But we've seen the president's top demand of open up the process, don't close it to only direct primary. That is what the National Assembly dealt today. And they dealt for the House of Rep and the Senate. And of course, we saw the different way and approaches that they came to de deal with this issue. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm telling you, wait till they do harmonization before I can confidently tell you what and what are inside that harmonized bag. For now, I will simply tell you the process has just started. Okay. Well, uh, Dr. Katja Nunaju is the Director General, Heritage Center. It's always a pleasure to have you join us on the show. Thank you so much. We appreciate your thoughts. Thank you for having me. Great. Well, thank you all for staying with us. We'll take a quick break now. When we return, we look at the Educational Qualifications Review for Presidential Candidates COP23, uh, 2023. Exactly what change will it make? Stay with us.